We found the act. Took me a minute. We have that, see now this video is broken into two parts. First was selecting the hole and trying to not hurt my chicken while I dug the hole. The second part is finding the axe, which was actually inside my house. And now I think we're gonna put some fertilizer down too. We're this is gonna be you know we're planting a paluda paludo do mercury PDM Doctor's Jabuti Kaba. Is it Paluda or Paludo? I can't remember. It's PDM, Paludo de Mercury, M-U-C, R-U, M-U-C-U, M-U-C-U, R-I, how do you spell Mukuri? Mukuri, M-U-C-U-R-I, I believe, Mukuri. It's what it spells like, I believe. Man, I got a root here, I got a chop. This is a big one, right next to this big old tree. Sorry about you. Be careful now. Whoa, that's a bouncer, that's hard wood. Hot wood, man. Yeah, I've got a wall of roots and I, I frame these. We, we whittle them down and we frame them. But uh, every time you cut a tree root, I, I, we make art out of it. So this is one we're gonna put aside and frame later on. I do art projects with those. It's just the right thing to do. I feel bad about ever cutting a tree's roots. Goody woody, there's another one down here, buddy. I don't know, watch out now. I don't know if I can get through this next one or is that just a piece of spray wood? You never know what you might encounter down in these holes. Whew, I'm going easy. Ah. Oh. Ah. Ah. It ain't fun until you bust the ax out. Yeah, so we had to have an intermission to dig this hole. I'm just going along the edges here. There's some of those roots we were talking about in the other video that I had to go and grab the axe for. There they are. They've presented themselves. There's another nice little piece I could make artwork out of. I think this is about it, believe it or not. It don't need to be that much deeper. Believe it or not, I think that's it. We've, we've arrived. Let's check it out. Oh, yeah. You see how I'm putting the dirt right next to the hole? Leaving them piles right next to that hole. And I'm just squaring that edge off there. That piece of rut. Now let's do a test run here. Take a little bit out. Looks good. Now let's see how this one comes out of the pot. Whew. Hand up on the inside. Jiggle, jiggle. Look at that. That was a root coming out. Look at that. Come take a look. Look at the root. All the way down. This thing's got vigorous roots. Real nice. This is a solid root ball. That's basically that mix I told you about. Oh, it fits like a glove into there. Now I like to rotate it just a certain way. That's it right there. Just about like that right there, buddy. Ooh, the chicken agrees. Okay, I'm gonna plant that here. And then I push in the dirt along the side, pull out any weeds. Oh yeah. This tree is like, whoa, it is happy to be in the dirt. I don't think a lot of people have these planted out here in Florida, especially not this size. I'm gonna tell you what, you put in the water. And then I come back around and poke on the insides here. Lift her skirt up now. Don't go jamming the soil down and push the branches down in there. That's my worst thing to do. Ooh. This thing was dry. It was wilted because it was so dry and it wanted to get out of the pot. So I said, you want to get out of the pot? All right, I'll plant you in the ground. <laughs> Buddy. Don't hit yourself in the... You know my favorite thing to do, Angel? I'll be packing down the soil. And I'll take the shovel and go, boom. <laughs> 
That's the fun thing to do. Careful for that. I've done that before. That's my favorite thing to do. Hit yourself in the back of the head with a shovel. And that's almost there. That tree looks gorgeous, man. Wow. Wow. That's more exciting than getting a new car, than hatching some kind of turtle, than eating pancakes. That's more exciting than watching the 9 o'clock news with Anderson Beautiful Cooper. Even though I think he's a wonderful dude and all, I'd rather be out here shuffling my feet in this dirt and smelling this leaf on this rare tree from Brazil. You see, I might not be able to make it to Brazil, but I went and took a piece of it and brought it here to me. And I get to hug it here. You smell it. It's got a smell to it. You wouldn't know it until you smelled it. Hold on. Rustle them up a little bit. Oh, it smells so good. Welcome home, buddy. Welcome home. Here to stay for a little while. And if things get rough, I'll cut a piece of you off and bring, and graft you back on the Sabra. But there she is, planted in the ground. PDM, Pollutodomukuri. Pollute do 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 do. Doctor's Jabbity Kaba, they call it. And you know they call it the Doctor's Jabbity Kaba? Because there's a certain doctor in Brazil that popularized it. So we got that planted and take note of these leaves. Now look at the leaf on that. A little wilty, not bad. I bet you in another day or two, if we show this video again, this tree again on the video, this will all be straightened out. Like this is wilted. You see, it's like, it's not looking right. It's just because it got dry. That's the only reason, because it got dry. I'm just obsessing over here on that. That's right. <laughs> I like it. So uh, you want to now? We'll carry on and, and show them the fertilizer. So follow me over this way. I get it. I get it. Hold on now. I can figure this out. I got it. I got it. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. I'm a genius. Not really. Thank you. Don't breathe it in. Yeah, the dust. This is another time. Maybe we should be using a bag. This is probably not the smartest thing to do, but I wanted to show you what this stuff looks like. This is a $20 bag, at least. Everything likes to eat it, matter of fact. I think I've seen chickens eating it. I've seen rats eating it. Rats definitely eat it. Every time I go to pick it up at Lowe's or Home Depot, there's bags that have been chewed by rats with holes. They used to give you a deal on that. I don't know if they do anymore. Now, the trick is to not spill this, no matter what. Don't let it topple everywhere. That was probably stupid of me to open the bag. I just did that to show you what was in it and how not to fertilize it. So. Let me show you something off the bat over here. If I was gonna fertilize a little tree like this, this is an interesting ordeal. Here we have a tree which is Jabuticaba in a deep pot. I learned, I learned the hard way. You can really kill a tree. If I went and took this much fertilizer, you know, like this much, and just dumped it on top of there, it's dangerous because you have a concentrated amount of fertilizer on, on a little bit of root. Do you know what I mean? Like, it would be different if the tree was in this pot and we had all this soil and all that space. But to just cover the root space on top with fertilizer like that and concentrate all that on the feeder roots at the top can nuke a tree. 
I did it one time. I said, let's see how much these can take. And I had a Sabra and I just filled it up with like a layer about like that much, you know, just a thin layer all the way on top of this type of fertilizer. And I killed one. So just be careful. If I was going to fertilize this tree, look at how much I'll do just to be safe. Look, it's just like a, just to be safe. I mean, I just dusted it. You know what I mean? It wasn't, see how much? It was like a, ha a half a handful. I'd rather put that on three times in a month if I had to, than to try to do one big feeding and accidentally kill my tree. So my advice is to feed less quantity more often. Light feedings frequently, not one big dose all, all at once. So that's my advice on that. So you saw me, that was me being paranoid and, for, and just giving something just a touch. And look at me fertilizing these. Look how much I'm using. It's like a dusting. Look at to come through and you can probably use more than this but that's what i like to do when i'm being stingy i could maybe use a little more that's what i've been doing right there yeah it's yeah. about right just a little dusting that's light though you could go harder probably depending on what you're fertilizing jabuti kabas and eugenias be careful just be careful and then maybe if you want to be smart have some kind of cup to to dole it out in like this is a good size for little plants just to have a little bit amount. This is another good size to have for big plants. Let's go fertilize some more stuff and not drop this. Okay, here's some Camu Camus over here in pots. Check these out. These need a little fertilizer. Look how much I fertilize these. Look at the game change right here. See, I'm not as scared with these. They get two half scoops basically like that. See that? Basically like that. Like basically a full scoop, but I did it in two. And if you're worried about stuff eating it off of the surface, you should have a rake or something, don't probably use your hand unless you're grimy like me, because it stinks and it burns your cuts, it'll burn you, it's probably not good to get on your skin, this fertilizer, but I went ahead and scratched that in, so nothing eats it. Yeah, my hand's starting to burn right now, so you should probably use some kind of rake and have some kind of mask, I guess, but you see me just itching it on in. These are some, I think that's gonna die. I'm not gonna talk about that. Let's just say, be careful what you buy on eBay, you ain't gonna live. Okay, these are some sapodillas. Look at me. This is me being lazy fertilizing sapodillas. They could probably use a lot more, but I just want them to have a taste. I'm just giving them a taste. Using the, stepping it up to the bigger size jar now. And then we're just gonna pepper it in. Pepper, pepper down. Look at that there, just a little bit there. Don't breathe it in, don't breathe it in. Sapodillas are pretty strong. I don't, I've never over fertilized one of them. You don't want to get it on the leaves either. It's probably not too good to get it on the leaves. Not going to kill the tree, but it'll burn your leaves sometimes if you let it sit on the leaves. So that was that. I could have fed them more, but like I said, I like to be stingy with the fertilizer. Now let's go out into the Jabuti Kaba Grove and pretend like we know what we're doing. All right, I'm going to pull this so it doesn't fall. John Kimber gave me this cart. I love it. Thank you, John Kimber. This tree don't need fertilizer. This one could use some. Cherry the real grand, I'll give fertilizer. Cherry the real. There's a lot of weeds next to it, so I gave it extra. And then I would pull some weeds too. There may be some ants down here, so I can't pull it as much as I'd like. So you see me pulling some weeds back and scratching it in? That may help. That's all I can do. And I might give it another hit because it's crowded by weeds. The more it's crowded by weeds, the more I'd say, don't be scared to feed it a little more because you're feeding the weeds too. Put it right by by that trunk, a little bit more. Not too much. And then pull some more weeds and scratch it in. And just pray. all we can do better than nothing I planted a pigeon pea right next to it by the way beautiful specimen plant we planted this pigeon pea right next to this and then we're hoping it's gonna shade it out and just be a beautiful annual I mean perennial
Okay, we got some of these Jabba de Cabas over here. Check this out, Angel. This is um, a Jabba de Cabba called Clinia species, like Clinia sp, NV, Caipirinha. It's supposed to be like a dwarf Sabara, but look, it needs weed pulled. Check for snakes, check for wasps. First do a, ru a rustle. Ah, I hit my, my knee with my elbow. It hurts so good. I'm showing off here, I need to slow down. The snakes have me frazzled. There are uh, pygmy rattlers out here. I've seen, I've seen one on the property and I always worry I'm just gonna get into it and pull some weeds and there's gonna be one coiled up underneath the tree. It's gonna bite my finger. And then I have to go worry about that. They just, I always take my time. But see, I'm pulling my weeds here. I've let the weeds get out of hand, but pull them back. If you're gonna put fertilizer down, at least pull the weeds back. Cause you're wasting it. You're feeding it to the weeds. I'm still probably feeding it to the weeds, but not as much at least, cause you gotta get some of these roots out. So anyway, I'm cleaning up these weeds real quick, making sure to get some of the roots out. Uh, these are just about fruiting size, believe it or not. So I pulled them back and then here I go with the fertilizer. Look at the amount. Let me pull one of these here. Can see my hand? it on in. I could use just a little more. Where'd that truck go? Right here. So, use about two cups on here, if that. That's in the ground. It's got weeds around it. I'm not going too crazy. I, I left some in there, so I only used about a cup and a half. Woo! Now, Patanga Tuba, watch this. See, I ain't scared to go Patanga Tuba. You can hit them kind of harder. Not crazy, but a little harder. They can take more fertilizer for sure. Breathe out in that dust, and boy, I'm holding my breath. Woo! Yeah, don't breathe that stuff in. I make it a point to hold my breath while I'm working, if I can. And watch out for them velvet ants. I seen them out here the other day, a velvet ant. Buddy, those are the scariest little thing you ever did see. Just don't step on it. They're not aggressive until you grab it by accident. So just ponder the path of your foot and your hand. I'm saying that now, and every time I, you got me getting scared now, something's gonna happen like an omen. I'm gonna slow my roll. That's been fertilized though, and it should come looking nice. Let's go on to the next one. I just dump it right on the middle like that. And I use about a, a whole one of these maybe. So that's two, two of them halfway. And then I pull the weeds. Look at this, a little die back here. That back, I should have pruning shears for that. Uh, Suboptimal growing conditions can cause the dieback. It can be too wet, it can be too hot, it can be fungus. But you know, they come out of it. They still keep fruiting. Look at this one over here. It's got fruit on it. Yeah, some kind of dieback happened here. I don't know, oh no, okay. I cut that with the, I was out there with that scythe and I cut that off. But yeah, it's still got some fruit on it. You know what, this season's been brutal, man. We've been getting over 100 degrees daily. Like right now, it's 100 degrees, dude. It's ridiculously hot. Mercearia strigipes. It's just a strigipes right here. It's fruited this year, too. It fruited, not a lot, but it did fruit. I pulled off three or four fruits off of it. I'm gonna feed that some fertilizer, and then we'll end the video. So, I'm gonna pull the weeds on this, gently, looking for any pests that might hurt me or snakes even a rabbit nest I've been down here one time and seen a rabbit nest have you ever seen a rabbit nest they they'll have this like little hut like a little hole they've dug into the ground and it's covered with moss and when you touch it it's like the ground is barking at you it's like ho, 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 and it flaps up and you look inside and there's all these little rabbits they're like marsh rabbits and they nest in the ground underneath a tuft of like fur and like leaves and it's like a chamber they make in the ground. I've come across them once or twice. It's kind of uh, startling. If you're down digging, it'll startle you. You're like, what did I, what is this animal here? Like, it's, and it's like, they lay down in the ground and sit there and nest. They're cute, man. The marsh rabbits, I tell you what. They're out here, a lot of marsh rabbits and I don't never shoot them because they're so cute. The dog likes to chase them. You know what I mean? I'm gonna feed this a little more fertilizer. 
That's what I like about growing rare fruit is I can just run my mouth. You sit there and talk to them. That's what we do on a work day. You just sit there and just talk about all the things in life. Hold on. Let me get a little more and fetch this pail. Where did I put the dash on the Give it a little fertilizer over there. A little bit on that one. Okay, fertilizer bay. They need more than that. They need more than that. This one needs a little touch again. Okay, this stuff doesn't go the distance. Actually, it does. A little more on that, and then this is the final one, the strigia pea. Let's pull back a little bit of this. I planted a pigeon pea by it, but it doesn't look like a specimen plant to me. <laughs> Save all your weeds. There's where I cut this one with the scythe, too. Look, I was out here swinging the scythe. I cut it down to it. <laughs> I cut off a nice sized branch off of this, let's say. Okay, so I pull back some weeds off of this beet. Oh gosh, I'm dripping sweat. And I'm wiping chicken feces onto my face. This is great. All right, and then I put that right there. I could probably give it a little more. I probably should, and pull more of these weeds. A little more on that. I get scared to over fertilize the Jabbity Cabas, but um, I think uh, this one's gonna be fine. Pull out some of these roots, actually. The roots are what's gonna be eating all this fertilizer. I tell you what, I tell you. <laughs> It'll make your wrist feel better. If you hurt your wrist, doing garden work and pulling weeds is one of the best physical therapies. I'm telling you, because I messed my wrist up a little bit skateboarding. If I, once I get out and pull weeds, it's like the perfect test to rebuild your, your cartilage or something. Okay, so not too much more. That's about it. Then I'm gonna scratch that in and dig a little more on them weeds. Ah, uh, keep that. I'm rebuilding the cartilage on that one arm. Yeah, I fell just right, man. You gotta remember. Try not to fall on that skateboard. We're gonna put together a nice skate video for you guys one day. It's my my dream. Thank you for watching. I'm gonna go wash my hands off right now. Have a great day.